But you know, I, I should tell you, George, that uh, this created a, a tremendous hardship. Yeah. And uh, I went down to Toronto myself, and uh, Mitch Hepburn was the premier of the province in those days, an Elgin County boy. I knew Mitch quite well and uh, had worked in Mitch's behalf uh, in the political field. And uh, I went down to see Mitch about getting relief for the single men. And uh, he was in a cabinet meeting and he didn't come out for some time. When he came out, he told me to send them down on the farm. <laughs> I, I told him, <laughs> I said, Mitch, I said, these men are no good on the farm. I said, they, uh, uh, they can't do anything on the farm. The farmer doesn't want them. Anyway, he said, I'll let you in and uh, talk Pete, to Pete, I want to interrupt you, so I'll make yeah. sure everybody understands what happened. Uh, you went down to Toronto, and Mitch is in a cabinet meeting, yes. and this is how accessible Mitch was. Yes. He'd, yes. Uh, because Pete Lang is waiting for him, someone from St. Thomas, That's came right. out of the cabinet meeting. He listened to what you had to say about how unfair the policy was to the right. single young That's man. That's right. And then he invites you to come in and talk to the cabinet. No, we can go on from yeah. there. He, took, he, said, I'll, he said, if you can come in and talk to the cabinet and convince them, I'll give the single people relief. And I went in and I talked to his cabinet. Could you whole, list who they were? Some of the well, men. Well, some out. of them. There was Marshall who had the big bull. He was the he was the minister of agriculture at that in that early cabinet. And there was Dave Kroll who had been the minister, the mayor of Windsor. Uh, he was in the cabinet. And he's and now a senator in he's Ottawa. A, he's a senator, yes. And uh, uh, Roebuck. Roebuck, Arthur Roebuck. Uh, there was uh, Heenan, the minister of labor. There was uh, uh, Pat Dewan. Uh, what was Pat? He. Uh, this. These were some of the some of that I can recall from memory. Well, then, what did you tell the captain? Well, I went into the cabinet and I told them. I told them how they were treating. I said, you know, the greatest asset that you have in this country is your young people. And I said, there's a man in Europe by the name of Hitler. And I said he's waving a big stick. And I said, he may erupt into war. And if war breaks out tomorrow, you're going to have to rely on these young men. These young men that you're making bums of, that you're killing on the highways, killing on the roads, that you're sleeping in jail. You're making these young fellas bums. And I said, if Hitler comes into power, these are the men that are going to fly your planes and going to fight the war. So, and I went on and uh, finally I, I wound up and I said these men should, should be treated humanely and should be given a right uh, to a rightful place in the community. And uh, they gave me quite a, they shook hands with me and gave me a warm welcome. And it was shortly after that that the single able-bodied men were given relief. And then uh, that means uh, a boy of 21 or 19 could... Uh, stay at home with the family and uh, draw relief instead of going out in the road trying to have a month circus. Yes, of course. Now, Pete, I've got, there are a lot of things I want to get. I've got a note here in the 1930s about here you are as an alderman and so on, and uh, you didn't have a car, you rode a bicycle all that <laughs> That's time, right. right? That's right. Yeah. I was chairman of relief for four years, not because I was any smarter or brilliant than any of the others, but nobody wanted it. It no. was a terrible job. And I had half of the people of the city of St. Thomas in my house down with their personal problems. But I, I used to ride a bicycle in those days up to the city hall and park it against the city hall. And the, the Times Journal uh, at that time uh, wrote an editorial about the, the alderman that rode his bicycle to the city hall. That'd be Tom Keith. Tom uh, Keith was the that, editor, eh? yes. Yeah. Uh, all right, now one other thing I want to talk about in that 1930s is that um, people who owned a lot of property yes. and they couldn't rent it and they couldn't keep up the taxes on it so the city ended up with uh, a great deal of property from the Ponsford and Cameron uh, Ponsford family. Ponsford and Cameron was only one of uh, the huge estates that couldn't meet their taxes. We had hundreds of thousands of dollars of outstanding taxes and uh, they couldn't meet these taxes so the city claimed the land. Now the land was no good to the city. We were land poor. We had hundreds of lots. So that 30, that 
council in the 30s got together and we said, we'll sell this land for one dollar. Think of it, <laughs> think of it. One dollar a lot. Yeah. One dollar a lot, conditional that you will build a house on this in one year. Now, you young fellows know what building a house today is. It's wow. cost five or six or seven or ten thousand dollars for a lot, and then forty thousand dollars for thirty or forty thousand dollars for a home. Well, now, Pete, I'm going to stop that. I thought that was interesting because we, you sold lots for a dollar yes. piece, and yes. it'd be interesting to Built know. Hundreds uh, of homes. Hundreds of homes were yes. built as a result of that. That's right. Now, also in uh, what you were saying about Hitler in the 1930s, uh, bringing an end to. Uh, yeah. Uh, that there's going to be a war and the young men uh, were going to be in it uh, did happen yes and uh, then of course the depression sort of ended towards the end of the 30s the war really the ended, war it. ended the depression. but before that uh, these the councils in the 1930s established an industrial commission could yes. you just say a bit about that and how weatherhead was the first company to come yes uh, we had we when we went in in the 30s of course, employment was unemployment was a big factor. The railroads were predominant hirers of labor. And I must give credit to Ernie Duckworth, who is dead and gone many years. Ernie Duckworth said, we must have an industrial commissioner. We must set up an industrial park to put industries, and we must put an, indus an industrial commissioner, a salesman, to go out and sell the city. We did this. Now this was in the Depression years, the bottom of the Depression. We went out and we hired a man by the name of Ralph McNeil from Owen Sound. And he was our first industrial uh, commissioner. Now he came in the Chamber of Commerce of that day, paid his 50% of his salary, and we paid 50% of his salary. And he had his office down in the Grand Central Hotel. And he started to work. The, we, we established the industrial area out to the northeast section of the city, where it is now. I can remember there was, wasn't an industry out there, not one industry. And then the Canada Vitrified went bankrupt. They came to us, they floated a loan of $45,000 debentures. Think of it, $45,000. <laughs> they came to the city to guarantee their debentures, their bonds. We put it to a vote of the people. The people, by a seven to one vote, agreed that the city would back their bonds. And I remember the bonds came due May of every year, and I, they never yet failed in meeting their financial commitment. Now, they were the first industry that built out there. And Pete, they're the one that's still there. Eh? And they're the, the ones, ones that's, that's still, still there. Yeah. Canada Vitrified Products. Yeah. Then Ralph McNeil went across to Cleveland and he persuaded the Weatherhead Company of Canada. This was in 1938. This was the first American company that came from Ohio to St. Thomas and uh, established down on Inkerman Street and they're still there. Very wonderful industry. In that, I always say that in, in that year, we built a bridge from Elgin County over to the state of Ohio, and we brought the Timken people and the Jaeger people and all these other people here, brought a great many of these American industries that we have today. Pete, I, I'd just like to make a comment there. I, I think it's very interesting that in the height of the Depression, when the uh, tax base is terribly low and your relief costs are terribly high, that you uh, established, uh, went out and hired an industrial minister, set aside an industrial park. Now, you were probably able to do it much cheaper than you would have been That's 10 right. years later, eh? Yes. And that uh, that industrial park is still functioning. We still have an industrial commissioner, That's and right. we have a very good industrial base in St. Thomas. And uh, uh, it, it remind people of how uh, important, I think, planning is and, yes, uh, yes, to is. analyze the problem of a city and do it at the time. And that's, I, that's I, right, John.